I'm here to present part of my PhD work, which is a self-managed architecture for sensor networks on real-time uh, data analysis, based on real-time data analysis. So uh, this work was done by me, my supervisors, and a colleague of us, and it's a platform. And today I will start giving, explaining to you what's the problem and some related work, some other platforms that do similar job. I will show you the solution, how it's working, some conclusion, and how we, we are planning to proceed. So when we talk about uh, wireless sensor networks uh, in the IoT, and actually when we talk about IoT in general, people may think about smart TVs, uh, smart watches, and in fact, I'm talking about these sensors, like this, and there are some other models. And they have temperature sensors, they may have uh, relative humidity sensors, they may collect many types of uh, parameters from the environment. They are very small, as you can see. They are powered by batteries, and they have a radio antenna. So they can communicate with each other, and uh, it would be very expensive to connect directly to, uh, to the internet, although in some cases it may be necessary. So, uh, if we put all these nodes together, they communicate with each other, as I said, and they build, or we can build, a wireless sensor network. This wireless sensor network usually collects collect data from the environment, and all of this information is transmitted to a gateway. And this gateway is then connected to the internet. So this, this is the great picture. This is what a wireless sensor network uh, looks like. The thing is that now we have these sensors, and in the future, we expect more powerful sensors. Some more modern hardware, other types of parameters that will be collected. We, expected, we expect also that this gateway will be a more powerful machine, and there will be other algorithms to, to be performed, and as soon as it has connect, connection with the internet, there will be other cloud services to uh, assist their, their operations. And the most important is that we expect that there will exist many, many sensors uh, deployed, closed by. So the problem, when we put a lot of these sensors together, they may try to transmit all together, and the transmissions may collide, and the whole wireless sensor network may collapse. In short, we can summarize a wireless sensor network as uh, a couple of wireless sensor nodes that can communicate with each other. And even though they can directly connect to the internet, we avoid it because it's too expensive. And the modern applications of these wireless sensor networks uh, may trigger reactions to a change in the environment. Okay, so for example, if the temperature is too high, there may, may exist some reactions to this. And if this wireless sensor network fails, or if it collapses, there may, there may exist ecological, economic, and living losses. I will give you an example. There is a, an European project that we, are, we have uh, in our university, we are leading, which is based on olive trees olive fields. So there are olive trees, and they have the prob uh, problem with fruit flies. These fruit flies may attack these olive trees, and we are building these types of sensors that they can count the number of fruit flies. So this information is then transmitted to a main server, and this main server, according to the information that it receives, it launches an alarm and based on the alarm, the, the farmer can 
spray some pesticides to kill these fruit flies. The problem is, as I said, if this uh, communication or part of this communication fails, then we have some economic and ecological losses. So it's very important to have this interaction and this uh, reliability when we put more and more sensors. So uh, when we talk about just one wireless sensor network, we have this, this idea, as I said. We have the owner that can visualize it and he can maybe control the sensor nodes. And there are some solutions to do that. For instance, the mode view is a platform specifically for uh, this crossbow mode. It's a, uh, a specific type of, of sensor. And using this platform, the owner can control and visualize which data is, is being retrieved. There is another uh, platform called Octopus, which is also the same idea. One, one owner can access the data and maybe control what's happening in, this, in their uh, nodes. But when we think about the future, as I said, there will exist more and more wireless sensor uh, nodes and more and more wireless sensor networks working um, at the same time. So if we put a server in the middle, we may have, for instance, two wireless sensor networks being controlled by the same server or the same gateway. And if we move the server to the cloud, we have more uh, power or we have more, we are more free to access remotely over the internet, for instance. And there is one, one platform that does something similar, which is called Centilo. And it's a web-based platform. People can access data from many wireless sensor networks at the same time. The people can visualize this data and can control some, some sensors. What we did, we basically closed the loop here. We introduced another data analytics server, which is also in the cloud. And uh, we built this main dashboard uh, in the middle, which is responsible for forwarding the information. So the framework that we use here to control the wireless sensor networks was, you can find it, it's, uh, it's online, you can download. And this, the algorithm that we used to analyze part of the data is going to be also uh, presented in a week in, in the World Forum of, on the Internet of Things. So, what do we do? We close the loop. We close the loop. The, these sensors are collecting the, the, the data from the environment. This data is transmitted to the dashboard. The dashboard forwards to the data analytics server. And the, the data analytics server processes this data and returns a recommendation to the dashboard. And the dashboard then forwards this recommendation to the wireless sensor network. So we have a closed loop. And if everything goes correctly, nobody has to touch anything. No human intervention at all. So what's the solution? The solution that I, want, I wanted to present today and what I brought is a distributed deployment. So we have this big, big picture and everything is very far from here, apart from the, the sensors. So we have the dashboard running in, the, in a cloud instance in the, in the eastern US. I always have problems with the sites. We have a data analytics server running in another cloud instance in the Western Europe. We have one wireless sensor network in Brazil and another wireless sensor network here. This, these nodes are working in, as a network. So uh, what's the goal? The goal is that, for instance, if we are collecting data in an office, this data may vary during the day 
but it has uh, usually this pattern. When people are there working and the air conditioning is operating, uh, the temperature varies a lot. When people leave and we turn off the, the, the air conditioning, then the temperature doesn't change too much. So the point is, we can save some transmissions. We can reduce the number of transmissions because we don't need this information. They are very, it's very similar to each other. So we don't, we don't need it at these times. Let's say uh, when people are at home. So basically, the algorithm can change, can switch the, the time between two consecutive measurements. It measures more often when people are in the office and uh, less often when people left. And the great part is that it can learn from time to time. It, can, it, it uses a reinforcement learning algorithm. So maybe today it can operate in a certain way. Tomorrow it, it will operate in another way. So here I have a, a small picture to show how it looks like when it's learning. So it's measuring temperature in different time intervals. And after a while, it can it always do more or less the same. So it's a very brief uh, demo here. Oh. Sorry. Yes, so here I have this video. Just to, to close, I, I, I'm short in time, so I will close with the, the demo itself. Basically, there are two wireless sensor networks. One, as I said, is in, is in Sao Paulo, and the other one is here. Both are measuring temperature and transmitting to the gateway, and the gateway is pushing the data to this dashboard. This dashboard is running in the in a cloud instance in the eastern US. And you can access from your mobile phones, from your laptops, it has the this public IP. And this dashboard is communicating to uh, with this data analytics server. And this anal data analytics server is in another cloud instance, which is also available. You can access from your phone just to see the status. And, and there are two algorithms, one which is handling only the data from Sao Paulo, from Brazil, and the other one which is handling data from, uh, from here. So basically, this is the step-by-step. Step. This sensor is measuring the temperature. It transmits to the gateway, which is also there. And the gateway transmits to the dashboard. The dashboard pushes the data to an API, and the, uh, which is provided by the data analytics server. If you pay attention here, it's getting updated every six seconds with new, new data. So the other way around, the data analytics server processes the data and pushes it back to the dashboard, which is this column here. And then the dashboard tells the gateway what to do, and it can control the wireless sensor node here. So no human intervention, and the loop is closed, and everything can work smoothly. So yeah, that's, that's it. Please, if you have questions. All right, thank you very much.